All right, so for today's first topic is LinkedIn. We're going to talk about LinkedIn. Um, it's a very popular social network. It's the professional social network. There's many social networks, Twitter, Instagram, blah, blah, blah. LinkedIn, this is yet another social network to build a presence online. And last month we talked about, we answered the question, do I really need to be on all of these networks? The short answer was yes. The long answer was yes, because you want to reach an audience. And there's audiences in all of these networks, hundreds of millions of people that use Instagram, that use LinkedIn, that use YouTube, that use Facebook. It would behoove you to also have a presence on these networks, to find that audience, because that's the whole point of social media for a business. We want to find an audience that cares about our product or our brand or whatever we're trying to do online. Let's say I'm a realtor. I'm trying to sell houses. I'm not going to sell that house through the internet. I'm going to sell it by meeting someone face to face, showing them the house, and then selling the house. But I still want to use social media to, to get the ball rolling, to get that contact, to get that lead that I sell houses. I find someone, someone contacts me on my website or on Twitter or LinkedIn or whatever. And then we meet in face-to-face -face and show the house, and then they buy the house. So I still want to use social media to reach that audience. And today we'll be talking about LinkedIn. Let's go ahead and open up your web browser. So we've got all the popular ones down here. Go ahead and open any web, any web browser you like. And then up on your web browser, on the address, let's go to the website linkedin.com slash in slash Victor Campos. Everyone can claim a short LinkedIn name like this, but by default, everyone gets a huge, long name of gibberish. I'll show you how to get the short name in a moment, of course. And this is my personal LinkedIn, but we can create a personal LinkedIn profile as well as a business LinkedIn profile. We'll see how to do both, of course. But notice linkedin.com slash in slash Victor Campos. <clears throat> LinkedIn can be used for personal or for business. Let's say for personal, myself, I want to get hired for some web design company in San Diego. I want to get hired uh, in a law firm in San Diego. So I create a LinkedIn profile because it's the professional social network where I'm going to put my resume and all the stuff we'll talk about. I'm going to put my resume and my accomplishments and awards and all of that. So for personal, it might be very, very valuable because this is basically the resume 2.0. The old resume is this printed one, one page, two page, double sided. Here's my resume. Here's everything about me. Re resumes 2.0 is LinkedIn, basically. You've got the spot here to write about your type, your job title, your education, your recommendations. You know the the recommendations that you might give when you when you submit an application. What do they call it now? Recommendations. What's the other term? References. Um, references. It's the references here on LinkedIn as well. Um, you can set this for public. You can set this for private. Mine is public, so if someone does a Google search for Victor Campos, this is the, my number one result, actually. So of all of the Victor Campuses in the world, and there's more than one, this one, this result of my LinkedIn is the first thing that shows up if you do a search. That's what I want. I want when someone searches Victor Campos for the best foot forward to, to appear, and in my case is my LinkedIn. People then can then see my summary of accomplishments, whatever you want to write here. We'll, we'll see. We'll talk about crafting. How should I write this? What should I write? Talk about the summary. Experience. That's your experience to show that you're reputable and knowledgeable on whatever topic you're trying to do. Uh, so here, there's PMD Interactive, and I work as an instructor for this college and Southwestern College and my other company, and this and that. Projects that I've worked on because wouldn't it be valuable for people to know the projects that I've the web design project I've worked on before they hire me as a web designer that's like the portfolio I want to show the projects I've worked on as a web designer so I can get hired 
we will be able to put different kinds of projects here. There's a really big range of what we can show here. It should apply to everyone. Now, at the moment, I'm looking at LinkedIn as a person, but we might not need that. You might want to use LinkedIn as a business. We'll talk about that, of course. But here, you have to think about, do I want my name, my personal name, out there on LinkedIn? Is it valuable for me? That's how you're going to think about it. Is it valuable for my name to be public, my profile on LinkedIn to be public for people to find? It would be if I'm a realtor, perhaps, because I'm victorsrealtor.com. And I want my name as the realtor to be out there. But maybe I'm part of Remax, the big realty company, and I don't need my name out there. I need the company name out there. Maybe I'm part of a team of realtors, and we're putting the name of our company out there. We can do either or. We could do both, using LinkedIn for personal, using LinkedIn for business. We'll see how, of course. Skills. I'm going to say what I'm good at, and uh, this shows what I can be hired for. That's nice, but I can put anything here. I can put, you know, um, advanced experience in uh, MATLAB. Sure, I can put that, but what's, what's to say that I actually am experienced in MATLAB? We'll see that our connections can vouch for us. Our connections can, can click agree. They, our connections can say, yes, he does have a lot of experience in Dreamweaver. And then say, no, I never heard him ever talk about MATLAB, so I have no endorsement for that skill. So it doesn't show it here, but once we, once we actually log in and such, it'll show the endorsements of our connections that show that, yes, he is knowledgeable in Photoshop. No, he's not so knowledgeable in HTML5. In languages, again, I can, I can show that if I want. Education interests, recommendations. There's your references. You can have people write something about you or your business, vouch for you to show that you have that uh, ability or that skill that you purport to. We'll see something about groups. Groups are very valuable. Groups are how you make more connections. And what I want to say about LinkedIn, you really want to use LinkedIn selfishly especially for personal. What I mean by that is, let's say you're on Twitter, someone follows you on Twitter, you might follow them back. You don't know them, but you'll follow them back. Let's say you're, again, on Instagram, and someone follows you, your business on Instagram, and you follow them back. Sure. LinkedIn, I want you to think about using it more selfishly. Selfishly, not selflessly. Selfishly. I want, to use it, want you to use it selfishly in that, what's in it for me if I connect with you? Because if someone requests a connection on LinkedIn, I, I check who's asking to connect with me. What are their credentials? What do they have to offer? Why would it be useful for me to connect to them? I do need to get in contact with an MBA, actually, so I might approve that connection. Just because someone sends me a connection doesn't mean I'm going to approve it. I've got 86 connections here, and I know people that have 500. Well, is that really valuable to you to know 500 people, or are you just a, a, accepting your old high school? friends. How valuable is that? High school was 20 years ago, 30 years ago, whatever. High school was a while ago. Why would I still want to connect with some of those people? So use LinkedIn more judiciously. Uh, connect with the people that are really going to be valuable to you. Yes, I do need to connect with that CPA. Don't just, you know, connect with your friends and family because they're your friends and family. Save that for Facebook or Twitter or whatever. Use LinkedIn more professionally. So this is the company, uh, this is the personal, this is the personal account. You have to decide if it's valuable to you or not to have a personal profile. You can, uh, you can set this for private. Now the catch is you do have to create a LinkedIn account as a person first and then we can create business accounts. But you don't have to use the personal one at all. You just need to be led in the door with a personal account. You never have to put your education and what you're up to today and all of that. You don't have to put your picture or anything. You can set the account to private, the personal one, and then we'll talk about creating the business profile. Let's check this one out. Let's go to the address linkedin.com 
slash company slash PMD dash interactive. This is a company profile. LinkedIn.com slash company slash PMD dash interactive. Maybe for many or most of you, this is really what you care about, having the business page, a presence on LinkedIn. The point of putting a, your business presence on LinkedIn is, again, to show to the world. If someone searches your company, if they're going to research you, people do this all the time. Who is this that I'm about to do business with? If they search for your company and they find you on LinkedIn here, you have the opportunity to put your best foot forward because the search engines like Bing and Yahoo and Google are going to scour all over the web to find information about you that might be public and if someone searches that information could show up on these search engines why not put the best information out there to get ahead of the not so good information because there's only 10 slots on the first page of results on Google right why not take as many of them up with with good things such as my LinkedIn profile that I crafted, my Facebook company page that I crafted, and all of that. And so here we're writing about what the business is, these keywords, this ties into the larger concepts of SEO. If you take the search engine optimization class, which is actually going on right now, it just started this week, Wednesday, 12.30 noon, there's still space if you'd like to come back next week, Wednesday. It'll be day two, but I record the lecture so you can catch up to day one. But I'm starting my SEO class again this month. And that's a very valuable class because SEO is more techniques on how to get traffic to your website. One of the techniques is social media, this class. But in that class, we talk about keywords. What are you writing so that when people search on Google or Bing or Yahoo, etc., that they find you crafting that, crafting those those words and messages. That's Wednesdays, 1230. In room 110, downstairs. And so this is info about the company, when it was founded, address, website, all of that, because still, with all of social media, we often will still have some sort of link back to our main website. Because what what you accomplish basically on these social networks is advertising, is marketing, is reaching an audience. But then your ultimate goal, you usually still accomplish that on your website or on the phone or whatever. Let's say the example of a fictional business, Victor's Bakery. I'm going to sell donuts, but I'm not really going to sell the donut on my website because I make the donuts uh, in the store on Main Street. But I'm still going to get on LinkedIn, I'm still going to get on Instagram, YouTube, whatever, and market my donuts. But you won't actually buy the donut until you come in person or maybe order online. So I'm going to have links back to my website where the person can accomplish that goal, where they can click buy now, or they can click call now to accomplish the ultimate goal. Because I can't actually sell my donuts on LinkedIn. But I can guide people back to my company website to sell them there. And we'll be sharing updates uh, on LinkedIn, you know, what's, what's being accomplished, what tips, what advice are we putting out there, because one effective way to, to use any of this social media is the, is the, is the free... Is, what's a good name for it it's a something for free the first the first bite free model social media the first bite is free model in that you give away something let's say I'm a web design company I'm gonna give away a free article about how to set up WordPress and so people will see that and then people will like it or share it or comment whatever and I'm giving something away for free but ultimately, I'm doing that because I'm, in, I'm showing people I know what I'm talking about regarding web design. Here's how to do it yourself, but if you're having trouble, I'm available to get hired. 
I'm a realtor. I'm going to give away an article, Top 5 Pitfalls When Buying a House. And I write about it very intelligently, and I show people, don't forget to do this when you buy a house. And people get educated, but then they say, this sounds complicated. Maybe I'll hire them because they seem to know what they're talking about. So the point of these updates and such is to give stuff away for free to entice them to then eventually pay for something or hire you or read that other article or donate to your nonprofit. If I'm a nonprofit and I'm sharing updates about the good that your donations are doing, that makes someone feel good and say, I want to donate to that. I want to help the, the animals. So I'll donate that article. It doesn't always have to be about the hard sell, buy this, buy that, hire me. It can be anything to share because that's how you reach an audience. You're not always going to hit them over the head by selling something and buy this, buy that. You're going to share fun, frivolous things. You're going to engage in, in, in the different aspects of social media. LinkedIn is a little bit more focused on the professional stuff, so we have to be more judicious there. But if we're talking about Facebook, you know, I might be sharing all of this professional content on Facebook all the time, and then once in a while do a funny cat picture. Great, you know, a Monday motivation cat picture photo to, to you know, for levity, to change things up. And so we'll see that we can have followers on LinkedIn as well. You can you can have your company followed on LinkedIn, which is different than on the personal one where you click to connect. If you follow a company, you're going to keep up to date with what they're posting. So those are the two big aspects of LinkedIn for personal, for business. And they could both be valuable to you. How many of you currently have a personal LinkedIn account like this? Okay, good. How many of you have a business LinkedIn so you have to decide if you want one or not. We will be talking about how to set one up. And when I talked about last month, remember, I'm usually saying, we're going to create a profile and such. And I recommend to create a new one just to kind of learn it from scratch, to learn the basics of it, because I've been using LinkedIn for years. But they change it all the time. I've used Twitter for years. They change it all the time. It is valuable, I've found, to create a brand new account every other year or so just to see what's new and then delete the account once I learn it. And same thing here with LinkedIn. We can create a brand new LinkedIn account a fake email, a f with a fake email just to see, oh, this has this feature that mine doesn't. Or this has a feature that mine does, but I never turned it on. Because when I created my account four years ago, it didn't have that feature. So you have to decide to create a brand new one or to use your existent one. If you do create a new one, we can delete it later. Any questions so far? All right, so let's click on the top left corner, the LinkedIn logo, to go back to the main screen. If you're going to create a new account, this is the way you would go. And again, you have to decide, am I going to use LinkedIn as the personal account or as the business account, or both? But if you are going to use the the one where it's a business page, a company page, you do have to first create a personal account. And you can make it up. You can create a brand new account called Darth Vader, and it'll let you. And then after I log in with Darth Vader, then I will create my business company page. So you have to decide. You can log in with your current credentials and just wait a moment. But I'm going to go through the process of creating a brand new LinkedIn it's just so that I touch on different things that are offered that you might not be aware of. And we can delete this. So I'm going to go back to the LinkedIn.com page. LinkedIn.com. Get started. It's free. First name, last name, email, password. If you don't want to create a new one, of course, just wait a moment while I go through this process and then we'll talk about what we do with the account. But I will go through join now. So everything that I'm about to show here, we can access it 
If you've already got an account, I'll show you where to access it. But I'm going to show what this looks like when you set it up for the first time. Zip code, of course, that's fine. You can put in your zip code. <coughs> Are you a student, yes or no? What's your job title and company? Now, I could start typing a job title such as Realtor, and it might be suggesting a variety of possible kinds of Realtors. I do recommend to select a, a job title that it's suggesting, just because if I'm trying to do something like, you know, um, non profit specializing realtor. There's no item like that in the LinkedIn database, and that means you're at a disadvantage. Uh, people that want to find a realtor are going to search the keywords realtor or maybe some of these other suggestions. It's giving you those suggestions because those are real job titles that people are searching for. Not that this is not real, but I'm saying that less people are going to find you this way. And you don't have to be this specific on this job title. We'll be specific on other parts of our account. Question? So do you want to just set up a fake one for now because you already have a real one? Mm -hmm. Do you have to have a good email for that? No, I made one up right now. I made up John Smith 9999. Okay. You can make up that email too. So they don't check it, right? No. They don't they don't check it. They will ask for a confirmation, but we can still use it without confirming. Okay. So I did make up an email address, completely gibberish, and they're not gonna check it. They're gonna ask you to confirm your email, but you don't have to. We'll still be able to use this and then at the end of the day we'll delete the account. No harm, no foul. So that's what I've done. So again, let's say I'm doing Realtor. It's suggesting Realtor Associate, Licensed Realtor, Realtor Sales Associate, Commercial Realtor. So whatever job title there that applies to you, I would select one rather than choosing one that it's not in, the, not in there because you might not be found as easily. Let's see here, bake, Baker, Bakery Manager, Bakery Clerk. Chef. Chef, executive chef, sous chef, head chef, pastry chef, etc. So choose a title that works. We can edit this, of course. And again, if you've already got an account, I'll show you where to edit it in a moment. Let's say yeah, I'll do executive chef. Sure. Yes. Right, so then a company, and the thing about company is this is sort of a chicken or the egg thing at the moment, which came first. Let's say I have a company called Victor's Bakery. As I type it, 
it doesn't exist yet on on LinkedIn but let's say I'm trying to get uh, the company of um, um, Coca-Cola if the company does exist on LinkedIn it'll say here's your company select it if your company doesn't exist on LinkedIn yet it won't show up we'll create one in a moment but let's say I'm a small business and I've got Victor's Bakery doesn't exist yet, so it's not suggesting anything. If it suggests something, you can decide to select it or not. Let's say I'm trying to create an account here. I work for San Diego Continuing Education. As I start typing here, San Diego City College, it's going to say, okay, San Diego City College, here you are. And so it'll, it'll then have me connected with San Diego City College and when someone is looking at the directory of employees at San Diego City College they would find me. That's the point of selecting a company here, of, a, of an existent company. But I'm doing my own company so I'm doing Victor's Bakery which doesn't exist yet. And I'll select an industry and there's a lot to choose from. This can be edited of course. I'm just going to select one and move on. I think we probably have food production, food and beverage, create profile. What are you most interested in? We'll use this info to personalize your experience. It'll be private and it can be changed. So any of these will work. Keeping in touch with contacts, building professional networks, staying up to date, finding a job, not sure. Any of these will work. It's just that there's uh, so much to do and to see and to use LinkedIn for that it wants to guide you a little bit that if you choose finding a job it'll show you more information that might be useful for you trying to find a job maybe references on how to write a good resume maybe articles on how to network keeping in touch with my contacts well it's gonna suggest for you upload your address book and these are the other people that are on LinkedIn so it'll just try to suggest to you I recommend to the, I'm not sure yet because this will give you the most access to everything. If you chose any of these others, it's okay. We can change it later. But I'm going to go with not sure yet. Uh, for mine, then it's saying, okay, every career needs a strong network. Build yours by looking for your email contacts. So it's still going to suggest, why not connect your email address? And we'll check your address book if any of your contacts are on LinkedIn. Now again, use LinkedIn selfishly. Your contact list is full of your friends and family, coworkers, and all of that. Do you really want to connect with Aunt Gertrude? Is it really going to be that valuable to do so? Is it really going to be valuable to connect with, you know, your 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 kids, your parents, etc.? Um, so I'm going to skip this. I don't find too much value in that. You could. You might be using an email address that is only business contacts. You might have set up a Gmail account to only connect with business contacts. Great. That might be valuable. But for the moment, I don't think it's valuable because I'm not really going to be able to build my business on the backs of my friends and family. I need, you know, new customers and such. So I'm going to click skip. It's a little, it's kind of hidden right there. It's very nondescript. I'm going to skip uploading my address book. It's still going to say, are you sure? Yes, I will skip. <coughs> I'm creating an account with a gibberish made-up name, email, and it's saying, okay, confirm it. We're going to do an end run around it. If you get to this screen that says, confirm your email, up on the address bar, just type LinkedIn.com again. It's going to have you stuck at this screen that says confirm your email, but I'm going to change the address simply to say take me to LinkedIn. And it says, okay, great, here's LinkedIn. So let's pause here. Has everyone managed to log in or create an account? Anyone need any help? It is going to keep nagging me at the top here. You're almost there. Confirm your email. I'm going to ignore that. <clears throat> uh, 
I'm going to ignore that. Uh, you don't have to worry about it. And then at the at the end of the day, we will delete the account. Uh, we're just I'm just kind of learning how this is all set up. And then at the end of the day, I can delete it without any problem. So uh, before I forget, because I always forget these things, let me show you right now where to delete it. And then I'll try to remember to show you again at the end of the day. To delete this brand new fake account that we're just using for fun to test it, at the very top right corner, there's a little blank person. Not the one with the plus, but that blank one. Eventually, we're going to add our own picture. But for the moment, our profile is empty. Hover your mouse over that. And then, uh, oh, where did you put it? Uh, settings. Profile advanced. Oh, sorry about that. They might have moved it. John Smith. Oh, there we go. Yes, privacy and settings. Oh, good. So you hover your mouse over it, and you'll see privacy and settings. Manage. Click manage privacy and settings. There's a bunch of settings here. We'll touch on some of them. But then on the left, you'll see profile, etc. account. Click on the account tab. Close your account. So later on, I'll remind us if we want to delete this because it's just a test account. It's under these privacy and settings. Under the account tab, close your account. It's pretty painless to do. On the right column, close your account. Don't do it right now, obviously. We just created this thing. But at the end of the day, we'll remember to come back to the screen. And after we've seen that screen, click on Home, and let's go back to the Home screen, and I will talk about what we have. Some of you might have a slightly different screen. If you ever get a different screen, let me know because I've got this screen and some of you had a different screen. But anyway, let's go back to home at the top left. So all the networks share very common things. Some sort of home screen, some might call it a timeline. Some call it a home screen. You know, they all have different names. For the same sort of screen, where when you log in, you see updates. I've created this account. I don't have any connections, but it's still showing me content. It's showing, showing me stories such as things such as stories you can't miss today. Check out this job you may be interested in. Jobs you may be interested in. If yours doesn't look exactly the same, that's okay. Based on a variety of factors, you might see things here. But on this home screen is where I would see the updates of my connections and the businesses I have followed. So if I follow Coca-Cola, I will see their updates. If I follow Southwestern College, I will see their updates. If I follow Jane Smith, I will see her updates. That's what the home screen is, the updates. And again, the point of these updates are that we're giving something away for free uh, to entice people to then eventually buy something. So do you think Coca-Cola is simply sharing another delicious photo of that drink because it's a great photo? No, they're sharing that photo of that product because they want you to buy that product. Do you think, you know, San Diego City College is sharing that photo of those happy students just because they're happy students? No, they're sharing that photo because they're showing get educated, get a good job, have a good life. So whatever you're sharing on any of these social networks is still, you have to still think about it in terms of marketing to entice people, to convince people, to convert people, to buy something, to donate, etc. And again, we'll talk about what and how to do it soon. But what I want to look at first and then we'll, we'll take a break is at the top we've got uh, a menu of home, profile, my network, jobs, and all of these have sub-items. Home, 
we'll spend some time on it in a moment, but what I want to first do is go look at Profile, hover profi over Profile, and click Edit Profile. Hover over Profile, and Edit Profile. And we're going to look at the details of this screen in just a moment. And you might get these pop-ups that give you some tips here and there about doing this and that, but I'm going to ignore them for the moment. And what I want to focus on right away is this. Do you see there's a little spot for your, for your information, and below it, it says linkedin.com slash in John Smith 76 blah 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 gibberish. I just created this account, and it gave me this, this name here. That's my official LinkedIn name at the moment. Remember earlier, I showed you linkedin.com slash in slash Victor Campos. This is a testing account, so it may not matter to you. But on your real account, you might still have that gibberish name. To fix that, if you hover, and it's not obvious at all, if you hover over it, you get a little gear. That gear doesn't appear until you put your mouse over that address. When you get that gear, that's the update your public profile settings. Click that. And that takes you to one of the screens hidden somewhere in the system. And then on the right side, your public URL. Enhance your personal brand by creating a custom URL, a custom address for your LinkedIn public profile. This is just a fake testing site, so I'm not really going to go in here and put in John Smith if I'm going to really use John Smith on my real account. I don't want you to take the name from yourself. Right? This is just a fake testing account, but if this were your real account, that's where you would find it to put in your, your name there. I want to be Victor Campos on Twitter, not that other, I mean on LinkedIn, not that other Victor Campos in Brazil, or that other one in New York. I want to have the official name on LinkedIn. Not on this account, because it's a testing account, but on my real account. And as I said last month, which also bears repeating, there are a lot of social networks out there. I still recommend for you to claim your name on as many of them as possible. You may never think to use Instagram, and it might at the moment you might feel it's not your demographic, but it's still a good idea to claim your name so that someone else doesn't. If someone else took that name, there's very little recourse for you to get it back from them, especially if they're using it legitimately. Southwestern College, for example, wasn't fast enough, and they weren't able to claim SWC. They had to be SWC underscore news, because someone else took SWC years before Southwestern College, and they haven't used it for years. But unfortunately, none of these networks are releasing these names back to the people. If someone created a LinkedIn profile and claimed John Smith seven years ago, but haven't used it in two years, LinkedIn is not going to take it away from them. They're just going to leave it there. Fallow, unfortunately. I really wish these networks would, would fix that. I want that name. That person hasn't used it in a year. But they're not releasing the names. So that's why it's a good idea for you. Claim your name, even though you might not use it. You might one day think, well, maybe Instagram, maybe Instagram's not going away. Maybe I should get into it. Good thing you got the name a year ago. If this were a real account, and again, I need to decide, will I be showing my name on LinkedIn or just my business? If, if I only want to show my business, I don't perhaps want to show my name on LinkedIn, so I've got it right here on the side. Customize your public profile. Make my profile visible to everyone? No, make it private. Don't show my name on LinkedIn, because I'm only going to focus on my business. We'll get to that later. But have, that's how you can set this profile for no one else to find. That's up to you to change if you'd like. And if you'd like to create a badge, which is a little graphic that you can add to your website that says, view my LinkedIn profile, follow me on LinkedIn. Here's the icon, here's the code. You have to copy it and paste it into your website. We're not really going to do that. If you need to do that, we can talk during the, the lab and the break and such. 
but it's hidden here if I'd like to add an icon on my website to show me on LinkedIn, to follow me on LinkedIn. Your public profile badge. Any questions on this screen? Again, we don't have time to talk about it in class. We need to talk about it one-on-one, -on -one, but you're going to copy that code and paste it into your website, into your website code. Yes? Uh, if I make my public profile not visible to anyone, I could still put a my business. Yes. Okay. Yes. You, you, don't have to, you don't have to use this profile for anything. You just need it to log into LinkedIn to make business and then set it to private and then never use it but then log in to work on your business these codes are to add to like your Twitter accounts they're really more for adding to your website this code is going to oh, okay. go on your website okay. or a blog a blog too yeah Let's go back to the home screen. Click home at the top left. And we'll do a quick overview of these screens, then we'll take a break, then we'll get into detail. Again, home screen is where you go back to see the latest updates. The point of these updates is as I use LinkedIn more, it'll it'll sort of give me more information. Um, that might be valuable to me. Again, if I'm if I'm using LinkedIn to try to get a job, I might get articles down there on writing the best resume and so forth. So we'll be able to share our own updates a little later. Under the profile screen, it's all about editing your profile. We'll do that extensively in just a moment. We can say who's seen my profile because uh, people are browsing LinkedIn. People see your profile and you say, oh, I've got this recruiter looking at my profile. That might be valuable information for you to know. Every time you share an update, you share something on LinkedIn, it'll be saved over here on your updates. You know, they changed that because they won't allow me to look at who's viewed my LinkedIn unless I go to a premium LinkedIn now that you, I guess you pay for it. Yes, there's uh, there's this aspect of LinkedIn LinkedIn Premium where you do pay. I don't remember how much it costs at the moment, but it gives you more features. And all the networks have some aspect of that. On Twitter, if you pay, you get more features. On Facebook, too. They're all like that. And for you to decide to pay for it or not, it might be valuable. It might not. But usually, I'm going to be talking about the free stuff as much as possible. Under My Network, this is where I can go see connections. When I connect with people on LinkedIn, when I approve a connection, they'll all be listed there. If I want to add contacts, my address book and such, I can do that. People you may know. This may or may not be valuable. I usually uh, do find that that's valuable after I've been using LinkedIn a little while. After it knows a little bit about me and my connections and sharing and such, it'll say, oh, you're connected to John, and John is connected to Janet. You might want to connect with Janet, or you might want to, you know, broaden your network. But again, don't just connect with people because you knew them in high school or because you met them in at that mixer or whatever. Connect with people that are really going to be valuable to you. It's going to be valuable to me that I know that, you know, that uh, babysitter uh, whose babysitting company would be valuable to me because I need a babysitter. Maybe it is valuable to connect with your alumni if you uh, if you went to these various educational institutions, maybe connecting with these people that that were valuable to you at that point could be valuable to you now. So that's my network. We have jobs. Jobs is the spot where I can go in and search for jobs and later on we can see we can use this to post jobs because I can use LinkedIn as a place as a recruiting tool as a place to get more people to my business as to get to get, you know, interns or paid employees via LinkedIn. And there's the free aspect of it and the paid aspect. And guess what? The paid aspect is more effective. Just like all the networks, just like everything. You get what you pay for. 
We'll look at interests. And just to, if you're impatient, under interests is where we're going to go look eventually on creating our company. We'll look at that later. We'll talk about groups, which are very valuable to help us network and connect with more valuable people. Pulse is like the latest news on a variety of topics. Education. What's education? University. Where do you want to go? Okay. What's that? Oh, okay, so you've got here the ability under education to educate yourself. We'll also talk about SlideShare. LinkedIn bought this other company called SlideShare, why that's valuable. We'll talk about that later. It looks like online learning is, is Linda, actually. But ed, in education is more like I'm, I, I want to get more education, so I guess this whole is a place to look up universities and such. So these are different screens. Quick overview of them. We've also got business services. There's post a job, all of that. Advertise. But a lot of the more powerful features come from premium. Somewhere here, if we poke around, it'll tell us how much it costs. Uh, seems to be $29 a month. It may be valuable, it may not. Again, we're focusing on the free stuff. On the top right corner, then you have various notification screens, sort of like Facebook. This first one here is messages. We can send messages back and forth to people to communicate with them so that, you know, private messages, to get in touch with someone about that interview and such. We've got another one here of notifications. Let's say I posted an article about the top five tax tips. This will tell me someone liked that article, someone replied to that article, and so forth. We get notifications. That's valuable as we talked last month. Notifications in all the networks are valuable because that's how I know my, cont is, my content is effective. That's how I know someone's trying to connect with me. So we have that screen. We have then grow my network. This is basically add my address book, scan my address book, and then show me who else is on LinkedIn. And then your profile here, account settings, all of that other stuff. And the last section here, yes? So if you know all those people, uh, everything it tells me, people you may know, they're all in San Diego. What if I don't think that I live in another state? Can I change that? <coughs> and what would that be so that it shows that location, not San Diego? Just to confirm, I'm looking at the same thing. You went up to network, my network and people you may know? Or where did you go? I was on the, the next one. Yeah, next notification. The third one is that one. And then you did one of these emails? Yeah. No, I just hover over the, the plus <coughs> and I see people you know. And you don't see the names. Oh, OK. Um, that has to do with the people that you may know, has to do with a variety of factors, such as what email address you used how much you filled in your profile and all of that. And it'll see, oh, you mostly seem to be connecting with people in, Los An in San Diego, so let's keep showing you San Diego. If we want to show Los Angeles or other places, we can do that in, in a moment the way we'll see here. The last uh, item of our main interface that is always present, but it kind of becomes white noise and, and we don't notice it very often, is also its most powerful feature, search at the top here. This is going to be searching in LinkedIn. All of the networks have a search. We talked about Twitter, that we can search hashtags, search topics, and that's how we find people. We talked about Facebook has a search. We, Pinterest, they've all got search, and they're searching within their network. A Google search or a Bing search searches the whole internet, which might be too much to search. But if we're in the network, LinkedIn, YouTube, whatever, it's only going to search in that network and maybe help you find what you're really looking for. Then it says search for people, jobs, companies, and more. Before typing anything here, I've got this menu, these, this three-line menu. If you click that menu near search, I can focus. Show me companies with this keyword. Show me jobs with this keyword or people posts. Show me articles on LinkedIn about this topic. So just for fun, if I select posts, 
and I'm going to search for how to write a resume. And I press enter. I'm going to skip the I'm going to skip the uh, suggestions. I'm just going to type my topic and search focusing on posts and here's a here's 514,000 articles that people have written on LinkedIn. How to write a resume that people actually read. How to write a resume that gets you the job interview. How to write a resume. How to write a resume for Australia. So what I'm getting at is this search feature. It's there all the time, but we forget about it. We it becomes background, white noise. We're gonna look at it more as as the class goes on, but this is very powerful. How to find the right person, the right job, articles, content. Think about it in the opposite way. When we set up our business page, on our business page, as I said, we're going to be sharing articles. We're going to be writing these posts so that when people search, my article could appear. Great, it appeared, but what's so? who cares if it just appears? Someone reads it, someone comments, someone shares it, someone follows my business. And that's the point of all the social media, sharing some content to get a reaction, a reply, a like, which are good, a follow is better. Hiring me is even better because I'm writing all of these articles and showing people 33,844 people saw this article and 59 comments on it and, and so forth. So it's very active. Again, how do I write? What do I write? That's the part that's harder to teach because everyone's got their own business. But from what we've learned on the previous days, You've hopefully been thinking about how and what to share. I can show you the tools and general concepts, but how and what, why would this article about how to write this blog post apply to everyone? It, it couldn't. So you're, you're, you're definitely going to have a lot of articles and tutorials out there that says how to use LinkedIn. But it doesn't apply to me because I want to use LinkedIn in this certain way. So for some people, that article is great. And for other people, it's not so good. We'll do one more thing, then we'll take a break. Let's go back to profile, edit profile. This is another one of the things that I can kind of show you in general the tools, but I can't tell you exactly what to do. You have to decide what to put on your profile. But if we go back to profile, edit profile, very much like Twitter and so forth, who is going to want to connect with, with you on Twitter if your profile is empty? Same thing here. I don't have even a photo of myself yet. LinkedIn now lets you put a very cool background picture up there. That's a little bit more branding to show maybe your product or your employees or a photo of something that you relate to. And at the top here, it's going to give me a head start about, in my case, it's asking me where did I go to school at. And if I put that in, it'll start to build a profile. Let's say I, I don't look at that. Let's say you don't have that box. That's still just asking you to fill in all of these boxes, all of these fields. If you want to change your name, you can hover over your name. There's the edit pencil. If you want to change your, your job title and business, there's where you can change it. If you want to change Right now, it knows I'm in San Diego, so it's going to show me more content about San Diego. Let's say, actually, I'm about to move, so I want to change this to be out in, uh, I don't know, what's the zip code from New York? 10101? There we go, New York. So now it's going to start to show me content of the New York area. It's not obvious until you hover over, then the pencil appears. Add experience, education. Experience is your resumes, your you know your line by line experience about where you've worked at. It'll automatically put it for you in chronological order. In a traditional resume, what they want is that the topmost entry is your latest job, and the next one is your second latest job, and so forth. Here it'll do it for you. You can put them, you can add them out of order and it'll organize it in order. Reverse chronological. So whenever there's any of these little question marks, I recommend hover your mouse over them to give you a quick tip. Members with a school in their profile get seven 
times more profile views. It's just saying the more complete your profile is, the more people can find you. It makes sense because I'm searching, I'm a job recruiter, and I'm searching for uh, graphic design graduates from UCSD. And I've got those keywords in my profile. Graphic design major, UCSD alum. And someone searched it and found me. So the more complete your profile is, the more people can find you. And the same thing will apply when we talk about the company. So I'm not going to go in and tell you how to fill this in. It's pretty self-explanatory, up to you. But let's say I want to add some experience. Okay, this is what's the company, the title, the location. Notice what's required and what's not. I would fill in as much as possible. And especially here for experience. Okay, I've got a job. My most latest job, let's say, was at Janet's Bakery. If the if the business exists, it'll pop up. If it doesn't, it'll say add the business. I don't want to get sidetracked on that just yet. We'll have the deeper discussion on creating the business. Because if I select that, it's going to take me over to create it. But I don't quite want to do that yet. What was my title there? Again, uh, I don't know, sous chef. What, I'm, what I want to get at is the description. What do I write here? Just like a classic resume, the examples are valuable. Classic resume. Position descriptions should provide some detail of the position so users viewing your profile can get a quick idea of what the position involves. So, examples. Brand development, website traffic growth, website UI, and advertising revenue. Develop brand strategy and strategic systems. So oftentimes you want to have an active voice. What did you do? How did you help the business? How did you succeed in the business? Again, I can't tell you what to write here. I'm not quite qualified to really help you write what you need to write here that makes sense for your business. But take a look at the examples whenever they're present. Comprehensive database management and migration from SQL to Oracle. That's what you did. That's what you accomplished. That's how you succeeded. I think you might have a limit, but it's probably like thousands of characters. So in all intents and purposes, no limit. I wouldn't really write paragraphs and paragraphs and paragraphs of content. At the most, I would just write a few lines before the box scrolls. And that's about seven or eight lines there. Because at a certain point, especially if you're trying to get a job, the recruiter is looking at lots of resumes. And another wall of text is going to have them zone out. So if you have some bullet points that fit concisely in this one box, that's good. If you can get your message across in these, you know, one line at a time, that's good. Rather than writing a whole narrative paragraph. You can do that too. But recruiters, people are trying to hire you, are not going to read an essay. They need the bullet points. That's why the traditional resume is so compact. I'm going to jump to the section of experience. I'm going to jump to the section of education. You're hired. Or, you know, better luck next time. So, short, concise, direct, active voice. You can have as many of these experience items as you want. You can rearrange them if you'd like. You know, you drag that box. There's a section of experience, who you're following, and so forth. Education. That would also be valuable to add, perhaps. You have to think about it. What were your activities in societies? Examples, grade. Dis examples of the of your education, DJ at student radio station and trumpet player in marching band, three years study of Mandarin Chinese, student alumni representative for class of 01. So whatever you think is valuable for whatever reason you're using LinkedIn, as personal, as business. You have those big sections, and then right here it's saying photo. Yes, I want to add a photo. Eventually, I want to add a good photo. A good photo means usually a headshot, a bust level shot, this much right here. Not you standing in front of the building that you own. You're going to be a little speck, because then your icon here could be as small as this. 
And when it's that small, your little speck, your three pixels on that photo of you standing in front of your building. You want to have a headshot. You want to have a close-up of you with good light, nice bright light, maybe a very plain background. You know, standing in front of this right here taking my photo might not be very good because, first of all, the light is behind me, the photo is going to come out dark, all these weird patterns. You know, a basic white background, white wall, take a good photo, like that one over there would be really good. The light is pointing right there, stand there, take a photo, that's a photo. Um, wear something nice, especially, you know, actually dress for the business environment. If you are uh, joining LinkedIn and you've got a tattoo parlor, you're probably not going to wear a nice suit. Uh, you're going to wear something representative of the culture of tattooing, which, you know, not to put it down, but okay, you might, you might wear a suit in your tattoo parlor. Great. But uh, you want to have a professional photo right there, headshot. Not the whole body. You're going to be a little speck again. You want the, the head. When we do the business, most likely your photo there will be the logo of your business, unless you yourself are your company. I'm a realtor, so my face is going to be my literally the face of my business. That's fine. Or I might have a logo. It might be my initials. You know, VCR, Victor Campos Realty, and I put my logo there. <clears throat> Let's click on this view more. I can add a summary of my accomplishments, skills, languages I know, volunteering experience, lots of things that I could add. Again, what's valuable to you, you have to decide. Certifications. Maybe I'm a web designer and I have certification in Adobe Photoshop. So I put that in. Other personal details. Uh, advice for contacting you. Make sure you're found for the opportunities you're interested in. So add advice there how to get in contact with you. Projects. They might be valuable to most of you. Courses you've taken, organizations you're part of. Let's see under projects. Add project. You can add as many of these as you want. Project. Name of the project. In what occupation you have. They are tied together. If I've got if I've had an occupation of web designer, I'm gonna attach a project to that. Here under executive <coughs> chef, the project was, you know, appeared in Cake Wars on Food Network. When was that? Is there a link to it to vouch for it? The more that you can fill in a project address or an external link to vouch for your education or project or credentials, the better. Because I can make this all up completely to make myself a super star. But if I don't have this link to anything real, if, I, if it's not linked over to another Facebook account or the company page, it's not as real. So if you do have an address to link to, I would. And also to help vouch for it, what about other people you've worked with on that project that are also on LinkedIn? And then again, description. What did you do in an active voice? On some of these, you might have the ability, for example, under experience. On some of these, you have the ability to, to attach media. You can attach a document here. Okay, my executive, sh I was an executive chef here. I'm going to attach a PDF uh, that showed an, an example of a menu that we did or a photo or a link back on to some other website where I can attach a video here too, a video showing that I have experience in public speaking. Um, this video would be attached from an external link, supported providers, usually YouTube, Vimeo, what else? presentation. I can upload a PDF, uh, a PowerPoint that is, 
I might create a PowerPoint presentation and upload it too. So again, the whole point of this is to build your authority, to show that you know what you're talking about about a topic. And as a person, I'm a small business, I'm a web designer, I'm a small business, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a chef, a realtor, whatever, I want to put the best content of myself out there to the world through my LinkedIn. Any of these changes that you make, as soon as you save them, notice you've got a little top right notify your network. If you make any changes here, your connections will get a little notification on their home screen that says Victor added this education. Victor added this project. If you don't want people to see that, you can turn it off. Usually it's good to leave it on to show this to your connections because you're connected to them for a reason. But If you don't want to share these updates to your network's home screen, you can turn that off. You're going to see a little meter on the top right corner also. The more you fill this in, the higher this will go. And if you can fill that as much as possible, that's good, if it's, it makes sense to you. So we're going to take a break. At this point, maybe you want to fill a few of these things in, but any general questions on this screen, the profile screen? It's about 11. We'll take a 10-minute break. We'll be back at 11.11, uh, 11, and then we'll go on.